Today's lesson is the skin. Overview. The complexity of skin is amazing. It layers components and functions all work to protect and regulate the skin and the body. There is much to study about the body's largest organ and how to best maintain its optimal health. The aging process, sun exposure, hormones, and nutrition affect the skin's health and appearance. By understanding the skin's physiology, estheticians can, can be confident in treating this intricate system. Our objective today is to explain the function of the skin, describe the layers of the skin, describe how the skin gets its color, what are the appendages of the skin, how does the skin get its nourishment, and conditions in which the esthetician cannot work on. Integumentary system, which is the skin. Largest organ in the body, strong waterproof barrier, weighs approximately seven pounds, and accounts for 15% of your body weight. Contains one half to two thirds of the blood in the body and one half of the primary immune cells, which are the immune cells or the cells or your lymph cells which help fight infection. Its function to protect sebum and ep sebum on ep the epidermis gives protection from external factors, which includes melanin, which protects us from the sun, and skin can repair itself, so it's self-repairing. Our sense of touch, touch stimulates, affects body's function. Uh, nerve endings in the papillary layer of the dermis gives us our sense of touch. And sensory, sensory nerve endings respond to touch, pain, cold, heat, and pressure. Heat regulation, the average body's internal thermostat is set to 98.6 Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. As outside temperature changes, skin adjusts to warm or cool your body. And millions of hair follicles and sweat glands dissipate heat to keep the body from overheating. So when the body gets too hot, what it does, it produces sweat through the sweat glands to go onto the surface of the skin. And the um, environmental temperature or room temperature is lower than body temperature. Therefore, the sweat on the skin actually evaporates and cools down the body. As we said, cooling is achieved by evaporation through the sweat glands, and then we have excretions. The sudoriferous glands, like we said, um, excretes perspiration or sweat, and skin detoxifies by excreting excess salts and chemicals. That's why if you look your hand or your arm, it tastes salty, it's the excess body, excess uh, minerals and salts of the body um, that are coming through the skin. Secretions, sebum or oil protects the surface of the skin. If we didn't have sebum or oil on the skin, um, our skins would dry up and crack like prunes. The oil is what protects us, the skin from breaking and, inju and injuring itself. And also wards off any uh, bacteria um, from invading the skin the actually sebum and the sweat. Oil from the sebaceous glands protects us from the outside elements and we absorb absorption. Skin selectively absorbs topical products and creams through the hair follicles and the sebaceous glands. So anything you put on your skin gets absorbed through the follicles or your hair follicles and your sweat glands. Skin, dischar dis skin discharges carbon dioxide as part of the waste disposal. So when you sweat, you're sweating out west, waste and um, your skin's also, uh, your skin is also discharging carbon dioxide. Layers of the skin, we have the epidermis, which is the outermost layer of the skin, which is thin protective layer containing nerve endings. It's composed of five layers which is the stratum germinativum, or basal layer. This is the deepest layer of the skin where cells are being reproduced or cells are going through mitosis. Stratum spinosum, spiny layer. Stratum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum is the clear layer of the skin. 
the ones you see on the we have the most of in the palms of our hands and soles of our feet they're the clear cells and then you have your stratum corneum which is the surface of your skin that we um, see and this is the the layer of the skin as estheticians we work on so on the diagram here you can see we have our stratum corneum which is the top layer of the skin of the epidermis you can see how compacted these cells are they're like little shingles um, you know compacted together and held together skin is produced down here in the basal layer or the germinativum layer if you can see these are individual cells so these are cell skin cells that are um, in the process of moving up to the surface so in this layer is where the cells are going through mitosis and are being replicated as they are replicated they move up as they move up as you can see through their nucleus they um, become more compacted the further up they come they dry up and once they reach the stratum corneum they're actually dried and compacted you, you can see there's no more nucleus these are just dead cells now the dermis is the live layer of connective tissue which is below the, epidel the epidermis it is 25 times thicker than the epidermis and consists of the papillary and the reticular layer. This is where it contains blood and lymph vessels, contains sebaceous oils and sudoriferous glands, also contains nerves, um, and also your recti pili muscle, which is your goosebus, goosebump muscle. The papillary layer uh, connects the dermis to the epidermis, contains the papillae, which is small cone-shaped structures at the bottom of the hair follicles and capillaries. Capillaries and nerves endings are attached to the papilla. And the reticular layer is the deepest layer of the dermis. Um, it contains the collagen and hyaluronic acid. And here we can see the diagram. So this, the highlighted part here is where the epidermis is. This is the top layer of the skin, and as you can see, the corneum is the, the um, brown parts up here. The um, basal layer and germinativum are deeper down here. This is the layer of skin that we are working on. This is the dead layer of compressed cells. The um, dermis is here. This is where uh, we have our blood vessels. You've got your... Um, your sebaceous glands, your erecti pili muscle, which is your goosebus, goosebump muscle that is against the hair follicle. Here is the hair follicle that is um, inside the, the bottom of the um, dermis towards the hypodermis. And then the last layer is the hypodermis. This is the deepest layer and this is the layer that can actually contains the fat. So this is the adipose or fat layer of the skin. It's either called hypodermis or subcutaneous layer. Here's another um, picture of the skin. Here we have the dermal papilla, which is the connection between the epidermis and the dermis. You have your hair follicle here, and you can see this is a sliced version. You can see the sebaceous glands here that excrete the sebum, which come up the um, hair follicle to the surface of the skin. You've got your erecti pili muscle that is here attached to the hair follicle, so when you get cold, pushes against the follicle, the hair stands up. We also have our um, blood and um, veins here, which bring color and nourishment to the skin. And you also have your sweat glands here uh, which secrete the sweat and these come out through pores on the surface of the hair. The sweat comes out from the sweat pores or the sweat glands or eccrine glands. Okay, this reticular layer, papillary and again subcutaneous. Now skin color, uh, mel melanocytes are cells that produce pigment granules in the basal layer and the difference in skin color is due to the amount of melanin which is activated and distributed in the skin. What is melanin? Melanin is, trans, is our skin pigment cells or melanocytes. It is transferred into the cells moving to the skin surface and protects the cells from below 
uh, from the ultraviolet rays by absorbing and blocking the UV rays through, uh, through tanning. So when you're tanning, what you're actually doing is protecting the skin from burning. So you're, you're protecting the under near, uh, underlying layers of the skin from being um, damaged from the UV rays. Now you can see here in the epidermis is um, in the germinathium layer, this is where the actual melanocytes are actually produced. And as they are produced, the cells move up into the rest of the um, layers to the surface of the skin. The more sun exposure, especially UVB you get, the darker you get. Hair and nails are appendages of the skin. Hair is an appendage of the skin and hair grows over the entire body, except exceptions of the soles of the feet, palms of the hands, lips, nipples, and eyelids. And it's inherited genes which influence the distribution, thickness of uh, the individual's hair. Hair also contains hard keratin and keratin forms long endless fibers, which are called hairs. Nails are also an appendage of the skin. They come out of the skin. Um, and hard translucent plates that protect fingers and toes, which are composed of hard keratin. Onyx is the technical term for the nail. And hard or horny nail plate contains no nerves or blood vessels. Nourishment, and blood ve and, uh, which is blood and lymph to the skin. skin Skin contains blood and lymph fluid that nourishes the skin and it's essential for growth and repair. Nutrients to the hair follicles and the skin glands by way of network of arteries and lymphatics. Through this whole network is what feeds your skin. Um, um, feeds your skin. Now cell replacement. Body replaces billions of cells daily. Skin, heart, liver, kidneys constantly replace every six to nine months, and your bones are replaced every seven years. Elastin and collagen are not replaced naturally, so the only thing your body does not reproduce is elastin and collagen. That's why our skin ages, falls, and, and gets wrinkled and lined. Skin does not regain its shape after being stretched and expanded over time and with vitamin A and alpha hydroxy acids we may stimulate collagen and elastin growth and having a, the potential to slow down the visible signs of aging. That's just one um, alternative. Now skin disorders estheticians cannot treat include bullas which are um, uh, blisters, tumors, vesicles, Papules, which are um, little bumps on the skin, psoriasis, the skin condition, crusts, ulcers, furnuncles, which are pustules or pimples, rosacea, in some cases we cannot treat, sebaceous hyperplasia, which are little uh, sebaceous growths or sebum growths or oil growths on the skin. We cannot treat anybody with cystic acne because it's too spreadable. Steatomas are little pockets of fat that are under the skin, so we cannot extract those. Atopic dermatitis, of course, topic contact dermatitis and eczema, we do not touch. Anybody with herpes simplex, we do not touch as well. Um, seborrhea could be a challenge, so we stay away, as well as perioral dermatitis, which is around the mouth, as well as psoriasis and verruca which are warts. Now skin cancers, we cannot treat anybody with basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and malignant melanoma. Those have to be seen by a doctor and anything contagious like bacterial conjunctivitis or pink eye, impetigo, tinea, tinea corpus, tinea versicolor, which are all types of fungus, which are highly contagious. Conclusion, the skin is the biggest and largest organ of the body and protects us from the environment, regulates body temperature and provides sensation. The skin can be affected quite easily by uh, most salon services. Uh, therefore, it is important that you know uh, what products can penetrate the skin and what effects they will have on your clients. Estheticians should study 
and have a thorough understanding of the physiology and histology of the skin because they must thoroughly understand the skin and how it functions in order to effectively treat to their clients and address any conditions they may encounter while also providing the best service possible. Thank you.